Hi everyone and welcome back to Brooks Beauty Bazaar. My name is Brooke and in today's video I'm going to be doing a first impression try on of the Maybelline Superstay foundation. Roll the footage. So I recently asked you guys on YouTube whether you had a favorite fungal acne foundation and the majority of you responded with no and also that you needed help finding one. That is why I'm going to start reviewing fungal acne friendly foundations and some other makeup products as well more regularly on this channel. So you may have seen my video last week where I reviewed the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. And in today's video, I'm gonna be doing the extremely popular drugstore brand, Maybelline, and reviewing their Superstay Full Coverage Foundation. Now, I recommend this product as a fungal acne foundation all the time, and you can see it featured in my Target and Walmart and drugstore videos, but I've actually never used it, so when I was filming my most recent Target hauls, I was like, I've got to actually pick that stuff up and try it out for myself. I can't believe I've never tried it because you guys know I love so many of the other Maybelline products. So stay tuned because not only am I going to be applying this foundation on camera today, but I'm going to be trying to find out if it lives up to the hype. Some of you may already be aware, but this product actually won Best Full Coverage Foundation in the Allure Beauty Awards of 2018. And fun fact, there was another fungal acne foundation that was also a winner that year. Um, you guys should try to guess what it is below. I'll give you one hint, it is also a drugstore foundation. So before I actually get into the review, I do just want to mention to you guys that I've created free fungal acne shopping guides for Walmart, Target, Ulta, and Sephora. All you need to do is look for the shopping carts in the bar below, and you can download them right now completely free and start your fungal acne shopping journey. All right, guys, let's do this. All right, so obviously I have removed my makeup and I feel like I'm looking plenty dead today, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> my skin is not in its best shape right now, I'll be honest, but I went ahead and cleaned it and then I prepped it with just a little bit of moisturizer, which I added a few drops of my hyaluronic acid to, as well as a drop of my C25 um, vitamin C booster by Hylamide. Foundation wise, I am going to be applying the Superstay in the color 112 Natural Ivory. Now to find this shade, I actually went to Ulta's website and looked at the page for this particular foundation and you can kind of shade match yourself. It's not as good as the Sephora shade finder is because all you really do is just tell them your undertones and then they give you a recommendation based on that. So I have arrived at Natural Ivory. I checked this one in the store and it did seem to be a good fit for me. Obviously it's kind of trial and error with shade finding right now just because Nobody is really swatching and helping you match your shade in stores anymore because of COVID. Um, hopefully that will get resolved as soon as possible, but for the time being, I do think it's a safe bet to just try to use the shade finders on the websites and then go into the store and pick up the shade that they recommended to you, the one before it, the one after it, and see if which one of those three really hits closest to you. Um, that's what I did and that's why I decided to go with this one, which again is natural ivory. I paid $10 for this one flow down bottle at Target, but the price point is gonna vary by a couple of bucks depending on where you buy it from. Now I'm not sure what Target's actual return policy is on makeup products that have been opened and used, um, but obviously if you pay the extra couple of dollars that it would cost you from Ulta, you're gonna be able to return it and exchange it for the color that you want if your original shade that you purchased doesn't work out with no questions asked. So that's just something to think about when you're going to purchase this product. So we're cracking it open. It has a nice little pump on it, which I really love because I'm gonna apply this to the back of my hand. And then I am using my Real Techniques buffing brush. This is one of the older brushes, but it is still in great shape. So I'm just gonna go with like two squirts of this and see how far that gets me and start the application process. It needs to be a little bit of primed. Okay, that's about two pumps worth. So far the color looks okay. All right, so as I'm applying this, I did just want to talk to you guys about some of the claims that this foundation makes. You can see that is going on like already so pigmented. And actually, it's blending out pretty easily and seems to be a really good match, at least in person. It might be a little bit lighter um, on camera, but in person, this foundation's looking pretty much like the perfect match for my skin tone. So this formula claims to be 24 hour long wear, 
which I don't know if I would ever really need to wear foundation for 24 hours, except full disclosure, you guys, last weekend was Halloween and I definitely did all the terrible things, including eating way too much sugary candy. Um, I made terrible food and drink decisions. I slept in my makeup all night long and didn't even wash it off until like way late the next day. And as a result of all of that, I definitely have some blemishes on my skin right now. Um, so we'll get to tell whether this foundation can really kind of cover those blemishes up with ease on camera right now. I'm pretty sure you guys are gonna be thinking this. This is, is making me look like a ghost, like a zombie, but I'm gonna warm it up with some bronzer and stuff um, because I do have somewhere to go after this, so I'm actually gonna be getting ready. It definitely seems to be very pigmented. You could see it going on. It claims to be that. Um, it calls it a super saturated color, um, another way of saying highly pigmented. It is supposed to be lightweight, but full coverage. I will give it that. I think this is super full coverage foundation, and it is lightweight. It kind of just melts right onto your skin and you can't really feel it. I always like to just point out if it had a scent, really not very much of a scent at all. So I actually kind of like the way it smells. It's kind of just a neutral, easy kind of a wearing thing and you can't really smell it when it's on your skin, which is nice. It doesn't dry down too quickly, so you'll definitely have time to work with it, but I do also have to tell you guys, and as you can probably see as I've been blending this in, the more you blend, the better off you're gonna be with this stuff, and it does keep blending even when you think it's worked in because it was making me look really ghostly at first, and now I'm actually thinking it's starting to kind of meld into my actual skin color. So I used just those two squirts. I didn't add any extra and I don't think I'm going to. Um, I will say where I have the most like prominent blemishes on my face, which was right here under my eye on the side of my nose and then right in this area where I always get breakouts. They seem to be covered pretty well, although I still think they could do with a tiny bit of concealer over the top of them, especially if you wanted something that was more full coverage looking. Overall though, it seems to have blended down onto my skin pretty evenly. I don't see any dry patches or any problem areas so far, and I think it's okay. I'm liking it so far. So if you guys do use this particular foundation, I want you to comment below right now. Tell us what shade you wear and exactly what you think of it so that we can get more varied opinions in the comment section so that it will help everyone with figuring out if this is gonna be a foundation that would be good for them. I am going to continue on with my makeup. I feel like that's well blended in. That's all I'm gonna do for the blending. So because I cannot bear to look at my totally flat, one colored <laughs> skin tone anymore, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of contour to my skin using my Kevin Aquan sculpting book. This is book number three, and these come with all three of the sculpting powder shades in them, and you get a better value because they're full size in this palette. The other products in this palette are not fungal acne safe, so you could pop them out and give them to someone else or something like that. Obviously, I haven't done that yet, but I just wanted to point that out. I've used up all of my light. I'm moving into medium, and sometimes I do dip into the deep tone as well. But if you're on the lighter side, get the light contour shade. If you're on the light into the medium side, you could go medium easily, and obviously, the darker your skin tone, the more you're gonna wanna go to the deep. He only has three colors, so I just kinda wanted to point that out because I feel like people have a hard time choosing which one they want. If I was purchasing this product in a single, I would probably go for the medium shade. I am going to just go in and use a little bit of a dab of my Wet n Wild Color Icon Bronzer. This is super cheap available at most drugstores and Target and Walmart. Um, this is the color Sunset Strip Tease, and I'm gonna be using my Real Techniques powder brush, or blush brush I think this might be, it's worn away, to just dab a little onto that and then get the, um, you know, kind of apples of my cheek area a little bit above that. And I'm just gonna go across the bridge of my nose so it kind of has a nice sun-kissed look to it and I always add it to wherever uh, my the Sun would naturally hit my face so all kind of the high points of my skin 
Now I'm gonna go in with my Flesh Swipe in the shade Jiggly. Um, this is a multi-use product. It can be used on your lips or your cheeks. And I'm going to use a little um, brush to just dab some onto my cheeks to give them a little more color. Fun fact, if you go a little bit lower on your face with your blush, um, that gives you a more natural looking flush because that's actually more in the concentrated area that you actually naturally blush versus like right up here. adding some color back to my skin, which I'm happy about. I am going to return to my Kevin Aquan sculpting palette, and I'm just going to dip a blending, tapered blending brush into my medium shade again, and just kind of give a little bit of depth um, to the creases of my eyelids. I mostly concentrate it towards the outer edge, and I do usually kind of give myself more of a, you know, winged out, um, tapered edge with with a shadow type product just to kind of give my eyes a little extra lift now obviously I'm going through these products for you guys right now because they are fungal acne safe and so I want you guys to know all of the products that I would normally use um, so that you can shop them and see if you would like to get them as well I will say this has been the thing that I use so much I use it every single day for eyes and contour. All right, so I am now going to just, on top of that, add a little bit of my Maybelline Color Tattoo um, eyeshadow pot in the color High Roller. This is just a nice bronzy shade that you can see here. I'm gonna use an angled liner brush to just kind of line my eyes, and I will tell you guys, this product does dry out a little bit if you haven't used it in a while, so you may have to just use like a little paper towel and kind of wipe that kind of initial harder layer off of it, and then you'll get to the good stuff beneath, and it'll glide on with ease. And I'm just gonna kind of like wing that out slightly and like line my lids a little bit first, and then I'm literally still gonna smudge a little bit um, just over, kind of like more concentrated on the middle of my eye, and then just kind of um, blend it out slightly just with my fingertips. I will say guys, the longer I'm sitting with this foundation, the more I'm liking it, and the more I'm liking the way that my bronzer, my contour, and everything else is kind of looking on top of it. It's actually turning out really well. I do think the shade is right, despite the fact that it took a while to blend down. I could go in with, like I could have gone in with concealer. I just wanted to say this. I sometimes don't wear concealer just because I don't have very like dark circles under my eyes, which is very fortunate for me. Um, but I feel like sometimes it's just too much for everyday use lately. My skin just looks too cakey with it. Um, so I'm not going to do that today. Instead, I'm going to just simply finish this look off with some of my Maybelline Falsies foundation and also some of my Maybelline Matte Ink Crayon. Um, this Falsies is an old tube and my sister did this really nice thing and cleaned my bathroom and my bedroom for me uh, while I was at school and she accidentally threw away my new tube of Falsies thinking that this was the new tube. So we'll see how far this gets me, but hopefully it'll be all right. Actually, I'll start with curling my lashes just in case. By the way, while I'm doing this, I just wanted to point out if there is a specific fungal acne friendly foundation that you would like for me to try, I would be so happy to do that. All you need to do is leave the name of that foundation in the comment section below so that I can get my hands on it. This is basically a mascara fail because this tube is way too dry. You know how when you use half of a tube of mascara and it hits that like sweet spot where the texture is the perfect amount of like wet and dry and it's just working to the maximum capacity? That is what happens with falsies and the sweet spot lasts a really long time. So I always just end up going right back to this mascara. Thumbs up this video right now if you know what I'm talking about. All right, 
I'd honestly usually try for another coat, but I'm not gonna even bother because it's a little too dry for that right now. All right, guys, so I'm gonna just top this look off right now with my favorite everyday lipstick. This is the Maybelline Superstay Ink Crayon in the color Lead the Way. It's my go-to. I always have this in my bag, and I love it because it comes with a little sharpener, which I lost mine at work one time, but, um, my other shades have it so I can borrow from there so you can sharpen it all the time but also the way that my that I apply my lipstick it kind of works out because I always end up with an edge where I can kind of line and then fill in So some of you guys may be new to my channel and not really know about my personal history with fungal acne and my acne journey and my ridiculous lip rash that I had for years on end that wouldn't go away. It basically ended up being fungal acne related, so I'm going to link that video right now for you guys because it will change your life if you're experiencing the same issue. But the best thing about this particular lipstick is it causes me no lip rash problems. So it's just something that I feel so great recommending to people. And honestly, it lasts forever. I will tell you guys, another just, I have to toot their horn because they're really good at the long wear. Um, Maybelline is with the Superstay. I actually wore one of these in a different shade on Halloween. And I did sleep in it, eating it, drinking it, all the things. And it did last me again all night long. It was definitely on my lips the next morning um so another good thing to say about it all right you guys that is my look all finished up tell me what you guys are thinking what kind of vibe are you getting for this foundation at this time i would feel confident saying that this superstay foundation would be suitable for any skin type so if you're oily dry or somewhere in the middle i think you'll be able to get away with this with no problem i think this foundation has more of a satin type of a finish but I kind of like that about it. Honestly, um, I'm kind of over always having to have just a matte option. Even though I know how to work with it, I just love to have something that's a little bit different for once. So that ticks a box for me in a big way. Also, this product definitely has that high pigmentation they were talking about, which adds to the full coverage effect of it. The only real thing that I noticed about it that was a little bit difficult is that you really had to blend, 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 blend to really get it to you know, melt into your skin in the way that you would want it to. But once it was, honestly, the coverage is amazing. I don't really feel like I need to add concealer over this. My spots are pretty much covered up and I think it really evened out my skin tone and just made me look a lot more fresh. Now, as you know, first impressions are very important, but they are not everything. That is why I always go over to my stories on Instagram. You can follow me there at Brooks Beauty Bazaar, and I will tell you guys, after a couple days of testing this out and seeing how it really wears, I will give my final thoughts on it, and I will save it to a highlight so that you guys can easily access it. As always, all the products I used in this video are linked below so that you can shop them. You can also shop them by visiting brooksbeautybazaar.com and clicking shop at the top of the page. If you guys will direct your attention to the left side of the screen right now, I am popping in two videos that I think you guys will really enjoy. The top video is going to be my first impression review of the NARS Soft Matte Foundation, and then the bottom video is going to be my Fungal Acne Safe Foundation video, one I made a long time ago, but that still holds true for me, everything I say in it. So check those out now if you guys want to get a head start on some of the other fungal acne foundations that are out there on the market.